Hello everyone, hope all of you are doing well. In today's session, we are going to continue our journey on MEG1 British Poetry, in particular Block 1 that is the Medieval Poet Saucer. And in this regard, I have already uploaded 5 different lectures on important topics that is important for your upcoming term and examination. So if you have not watched those previous 5 videos, do go ahead and watch those videos in order to have proper clarity regarding this particular session. In today's session, we are going to discuss or basically comment on the Saucer's poetry in the light of his aim. Basically, we are going to discuss the aim behind or the motive behind Saucer's poetry in the medieval times. Also, a humble request to everyone that if you have not checked out the description yet, do go ahead and check out the description to find the links of different playlists of different MEG papers that will include MEG 2, MEG 3, MEG 4, 5 and so on. And also a humble request to all my viewers to do go ahead and check out the links of some videos of some beautiful videos narrated in my voice dedicated on love, sacrifice, time travel and much more. And if you happen to like those videos, do hit the like button and do consider to subscribe my other channel as well. Now without any further delay, let's get started. Now we all know that Geoffrey Saucer is often regarded as the father of English poetry. And why so? Because he made significant contributions to English literature during the Middle Ages. As I've discussed in my previous videos, during the Middle Ages, the use of French and Latin was very much predominant in the English society. Now it was Geoffrey Saucer who break the norm and he introduced a new and very refreshing form of writing that was done in English. His poetry is particularly notable for his various aims and purposes which we'll discuss and analyze in today's video. In this regard, let us discuss the first category that is the social commentary. Now, Saucer's most famous work, The Canterbury Tales, is a collection of stories narrated by a diverse group of pilgrims from different social classes. When I say they are diverse group of pilgrims, you have to understand that those pilgrims, the 29 pilgrims that have started the journey to visit the, you know, shrine of the archbishop, were from different class of the society. Take for instance the knight, he was a very noble, he was from the fighting class of course, he was very novel, he was very chivalrous and he has also fought the hundred years war. So he was from a different category again, again we have the nuns priest, we have the miller, we have the pardoner. So the pardoner was basically from a faith, from he represented religion. So all the peoples, all the pilgrims were very much diverse and through their tales, Shosher's offers a vivid snapshot of medieval society. So what happens is that with the help of their stories, what is being done is that he is trying to give a snapshot or a description or a, you know, a beautiful portrait of the medieval society. His aim was to comment on the social and moral issues of his day, providing insights into the complexities of human behavior. Now, right from the Knight's Tale, which was narrated at the first, you will see different types of issues coming up in the stories, which reflects the different types of problems during that particular period. And that was beautifully written by Geoffrey Saucer. Now, this social commentary is one of the central aim in his poetry. Basically, you have to understand that with the help of this particular uh, stories that were narrated by the pilgrims, Geoffrey Saucer actually tried to depict the socio-economic condition of the society and also it happens to be the central aim of his poetry. Now coming up next we have satire. Now what is satire? I have already discussed what is satire. This is the use of humor, okay. It can be the use of humor, irony, exaggeration or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices. Now, this is also very much beautifully done by Shosher. Shosher was a master of satire and he used it to expose the vices and the follies of the people he depicted. Now, say for instance, I will give this example here as well, like the partner steals and the miller steals. You will see the hypocrisy there, like his satirical portrayals such as the corrupt clergy in the partner steal or the lecherous characters in the miller steals reveal his aim to critique the moral shortcomings of individuals and institutions in medieval society. Now, if you're wondering what was the tale of the pardoners or what was the tale of the miller, let me tell you that in the upcoming sessions, I will also cover the pardoner's tales and the miller's tales. But you understand that the pardoner tale, the pardoner in basic who narrated this tale was a very hypocrite and a very corrupt person. Okay. Similarly, the miller who has uh, told his tale in like vengeance, like uh, in a reply to the knight's tale was also far away from any type of virtue. 
Coming to the next point that is celebrating diversity, Chaucer's diverse cast of characters in the Canterbury Tales reflects his aim to celebrate the rich tapestry of human experience. His characters come from various backgrounds and their stories showcase the breadth of human nature. Chaucer valued this diversity and used it as means to entertain and enlighten his readers. Now with the help of the diverse class of the pilgrims that was shown in the Canterbury Tales who started their journey to visit the shrine of Archbishop and through the various stories and the characters that were incorporated in those stories, Chaucer actually used a very diverse and you know discrete type of method of writing in order to entertain and enlighten his readers and not just entertain and enlightening his readers was his motive through the stories he has also tried to deliver a moral message a moral teaching so that is very important and this is how he has used the diversity to convey different types of messages coming up to the next point we have versatility and experimentation Chaucer was a pioneer in adopting and adapting various poetic forms from epic poetry to romance Favliox, his experimentation with different styles and genres showcases his aim to push the boundaries of English literature, demonstrating its potential for artistic and intellectual expression. Now, what makes him as the father of English poetry was the versatile nature of his writing. And clearly he has experimented a lot. He has used different writing styles from, starting from epic poetry to romance. Now that is the reason that why he could make English so popular even though when French and Latin has predominantly occupied the mindset of English society. So with the help of this different type of versatile writing and different type of experimentation, he could revive the English literature, okay, and which went on to become a legacy for himself and also the people who started to copy his work were known as Sosharians. Now coming up to the next point is legacy of English language. Now, as I've just mentioned in the previous point, Geoffrey Saucer could do something which other writers or authors couldn't do. He could create a legacy, a timeline for the English literature where it started its new beginning. Okay, Saucer's work played a crucial role in the development of English language. His choice to write in Middle English instead of Latin or French helped establish English as a legitimate literary language. As I've said many times that Geoffrey Saucer has used Mid England dialect to write his Canterbury Tales instead of the more popular Latin or French back then was a bold move and this move really paid off by creating a legacy of English language because it became very popular and it became very entertaining and it created a new beginning for the English literature to evolve and to become more popular. This aim contributed significantly to the evolution of the English language. Now coming up to the last point of this particular session that is the human nature. Chaucer's poetry often delves into the complexities of human nature, portraying characters with both virtues and flaws. His aim was to provide a realistic and nuanced portrayal of human behavior, making his work relatable to readers across different time periods. Now in order to understand this particular point you have to see the work of other writers as well because in some of the cases you will see that in the stories you will not find any flaws okay you know often the truth and uh, there is a victory for the truth and the virtuous people so it's very one-sided and it is far away from reality however in Geoffrey Saucer's way of writing and in the stories you will find a very common thing between the writing and the real lives okay so it is very much relatable that is why this particular aim was incorporated in his poetry in order to relate with the common people fine so in conclusion how can you conclude all the points that i've just mentioned joffrey saucer's poetry is multifaceted and serves various aims from social commentary to satire diversity celebration linguistic innovation and a deep exploration of human nature his enduring influence on English literature and his ability to capture the essence of his time make him a significant figure in the history of literature. So this is a wrap on today's video guys. I hope you had a proper clarity regarding the aim of Geoffrey Saucer's poetry. In case if you have any other trouble understanding any particular portion of today's session, do feel free to comment in the comment section. I'll definitely try to address it. And in the upcoming session, I'll be coming up with some famous tales of this Canterbury Tales, which will conclude the block one of your MEG paper. 
and after that we can continue with the rest do remember that block one do serves as one of the most important block for your upcoming term and examination so do not miss it and yes you can cover up you can make notes from the videos that i am making that will definitely serve a true purpose in your exams and i will definitely do well and also a humble request to all my viewers to do check out those videos that i have mentioned in the beginning of the video that are narrated in my voice those are some videos on love sacrifice time travel and much more if you happen to like those videos do hit the like button and to consider to subscribe my other channel as well as far as that also to join our social community handles that is our facebook group and our facebook page the link of both are given in the description and yes do check out the other playlists of different mg papers as well till we meet next time god bless you and thank you all